at 7 a.m. sharp every morning. Well, first of all, I'm impressed that you got the those guns with only one hour workout <laughs> per day. Uh, your biceps got to be tw- biceps got to be 22s or something. I'm just looking. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I had to, to harass you over that. Um, you, you know the the concept of of the big three for the day. I you know that is such a valuable tool. Whether it's the big three or five or whatever your number is, I've taught that in my coaching because you know I think oftentimes we're too hard on ourselves that we've got this long laundry list of things to do every day, and if we don't do it, we didn't succeed, and we're down on ourselves. And because we're chasing that laundry list, we might forget about some of the most important things, and that could be time with our spouse, or our kids, our inner reflection, our nutrition, or going to the gym. Um, I as well, one of my big, if I had a big three today, one of them was to do this podcast. And knowing that it was later in the day for me, I realized that, hey, you know, I could utilize a few hours this morning to be with my kids, wash the car for my wife do a little yard work, and then prepare for my business afternoon. And I feel completely accomplished right now um, on the phone with you, knowing that I've enjoyed some time with my kids, and now I'm doing one of my big items for the day. You know, and I think I I just hate when people get stuck in that trap of, I didn't do good enough today. Well, so this is a question I like to ask people. Number one, Jim, do you consider yourself a high performer? Absolutely. When's the last time you woke up and said, all right, what am I going to do today? Like you just rolled out of bed and said, all right, what am I going to do today? Yeah. It doesn't happen too often. Cause I've got my list, right? I know, I know what I need. Right. To, right. I know what I need to do. So, right. And that's what, that's what I say to a lot of people. Like a lot of people wake up and they're like, all right, what am I going to do today? And there's your problem right there. So I know a lot of people, what they say is your, your morning actually starts the night before, before you go to bed, you should plan out the following day. So when you wake up, there is no decision fatigue. You just wake up and do. Yeah. And then another thing I want to touch on, you're talking about um, doing washing the car for your wife, which is amazing. Another relationship hack for me is scheduling, ske- literally scheduling in time for my significant other. So my girlfriend, it doesn't have a schedule like I do. She works a typical, a more typical job with a typical schedule, but Sundays are her day. I don't work on Sunday. I don't book anything on Sunday. My, my calendar is literally blocked off for Sunday and then Tuesday night. So if you're in a relationship, it's unbelievably important to make sure that you're scheduling time with that other person so they understand and, and they feel valued because it's, it is so easy to get lost in the, the laundry list of items. But, you know, you have to make sure at the end of the day you're doing what matters and that is always going to be spending time with your kids and your family. So I love the fact that you schedule that in. I think that's huge. Yeah, well, you know, um, I'm a little old-fashioned in the way that I schedule out my day, but I do it exactly what you said. So I use those uh, old legal yellow pads, and I've got to stack them. I'm writing I... on that right now, Jim. I'm <laughs> literally writing on that right now. Okay, so you're old school too. Well, I, I plan out <laughs> my day, and um, I rewrite my day every evening on what I have to do the following day. And so obviously things drop off and throughout the day I'll, I'll line them out. Okay, this is done. And in the evening, as you suggested, I write what's important for me the next day. And, uh, you know, as soon as I wake up, I know what I've got to do. And, uh, it makes, as you said, the decision process much easier. You don't get fatigued from that. Um, I love that you've got a little bit of uh, meditation in there and some foam rolling and then the gym time and I think all those things are, are very important uh, to do and great habits to be in. So thank you for sharing your, your own personal habits. Um, Absolutely. You know, uh, as I mention on the show often, we want people to learn from our yeses and know that they can say yes to things that they're passionate about. Do you have advice for people that are at any point in their life looking to make a career change or deciding whether or not they should go to trade school or college or skip both all together and just keep working where they're at? I mean, what types of advice do you give to, uh, to people that you're working with? So I give a lot of different advice depending on the situation, but one of the fundamentals I live with and I live by is your reality becomes the parts of your imagination that you hold on to the longest. So I think that we lose our imaginations throughout, like with age, it kind of goes away because people are telling you, you can't accomplish that, or, you know, you should, you shouldn't try that. It's not realistic. And I think we fall into those, those traps. But what I always tell people is 
you will get what you're willing to work for. It, it's, to me, that is the, the most simplest form. If you want something, that's great. If you want something and you're willing to put in the effort and you're willing to build the habits and you're willing to learn the, the necessary things, I think you'll, you'll get it. I don't necessarily think it's about what you do. I think it's about who you become. And if your identity switches to, you know, for instance, say you want to, you want to be an author. It's great to write every day. That's what you're supposed to do. But if you can switch your identity to that of an author by studying authors, by writing, by doing what authors do, that'll be your new identity. A lot of us, our identities and our goals don't match. And I think that's a recipe for a struggle along the way. You have to figure out what your actual identity is. And if you don't like it, shift it. But I truly believe that you can accomplish anything in the world. I think anybody can. And I, I think one of the biggest keys to that is coaching. I think no matter where you are in your, your life or you know, your level, you could be the richest person in the world, but Warren Buffett has a coach. Everybody has a coach because you're either going to gain accountability you're going to gain experience, you're going to gain wisdom, or you're going to gain perspective. And that's, that's one of the keys to everything. Yeah. You know what blows me away just listening to you talk and, and reflecting back on what I've said so often is we're all capable of doing anything that we put our minds to. And I wrote down what you just said. You will get what you're willing to work for because I love that. It just blows me away how simple it is to you and I and many of the guests that I've had on the show and, and a lot of my listeners too, we, we have that belief and that's why we have some commonality in what we listen to and, and who we have as guests on our show. But there are so many people out there that just don't believe in themselves. And I think that that's a crisis because, you know, to watch people unhappy or just going about their lives, not being fulfilled to me is a bummer. And I, I just want to help as many as I can. Do you feel the same? I do, Jim. I'll be very honest and upfront. I, I lack self-belief a lot, honestly. And that's, I'll tell you a quick story. So speaking on the, the topic of people that listen to the podcast, reaching out, one of the girls that works with us now, She's the uh, executive assistant of the podcast. Mm -hmm. She reached out to me two years ago or a year and a half ago. And she said, Kevin, I've been listening to the podcast. I really love what you're doing. I have a question for you. And I said, of course, what's up? What can I do for you? And she said, I really struggle going up to people and talking and starting conversations. So I said, okay, cool. This is what we're going to do. Meet me at this mall this Thursday at 5 p.m. You and I are going to do some fear chasing. And we're going to go talk to people. Now, this is where belief and confidence really get tested. Because the day that I was supposed to drive up to the mall, I started having these doubts. Like, Kevin, what are you doing? Can you really do this? But there's two things. So she was going to borrow my belief. Mm -hmm. And I locked, I locked myself in to having to be the most confident person in that room. Mm -hmm. So what happened there was we both signed an agreement that, I mean, not actually, but we both signed an agreement that said today we are going to be the most confident versions of ourselves because of each other. So we met at the mall. This was the first time I had ever met this girl. And she, she showed up to the mall to talk to strangers with me, which was amazing. And by the end of the day, this mall had these mechanical animals that you could rent and ride, like drive around these little animal cars. And we literally rented, I think I rented a lion and she rented a giraffe. And uh -huh. we drove around the mall. <laughs> and she didn't fear any judgment that day. And she said to me after, Kevin, that changed my life. And I said, I want you to know, I didn't want to do that either. But that's my purpose. That's my passion. That's my mission. I have to be the person. Jim, I have to be the person that I needed when I was at my lowest point. So I always say, if you want to find yourself, if you want to become the best version of yourself, you have to find something greater than yourself. And that's what the podcast is to me. So I didn't always have this level of belief, and I don't always have this level of belief, but I'm more often pulled to do things than I am pushed because I have such audacious goals. I hate flying. I still fly. I don't like public speaking. I'm a professional speaker, but it's because of my why power. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I love that. And uh, your honesty about not wanting to go out and do that as well is key because 
oftentimes we need to put ourselves way out there to help somebody else. And, and when I say way out there, I mean get out of our comfort zone because we are so comfortable in our day in and day out. And it's when you break that barrier is when special things really can happen. And I, I'm certain you look back on that day and, and thought, wow, that was easier than I thought. And I had a great day and I, I helped this person. And, and I think that those are the results we typically see when we get out of our comfort zone and do something uh, that's worth trying and helping somebody else with. Yeah, I, I always tell people, again, a lot of the people that I coach are on the lower end of drive to five. So the lower end of confidence and self-esteem. And I always tell them nine times out of 10, things will go better than you expect. And the thing that matters to me is you taking the action. The result doesn't even matter because you would never get the result if you didn't take the action. So give yourself a pat on the back for taking the action. We'll take the result as feedback. We'll figure out what to do with it. But you have to give yourself a pat on the back for jumping off the diving board. The fact that you didn't do a perfect dive doesn't matter. Like, we'll get there eventually. Yeah. Well, I'm going to take this moment to say three things. One that I always say at the end of my show is what you believe is what you will achieve. Add your quote of you will get what you're willing to work for. And then finally, if you're finding something that you're willing to work for, taking that first step and working towards that is the most important part. Because eventually, like you just said, you will get there and you'll be satisfied You know, if, you, if that's where you want to be. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love those. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kevin, I've taken up a lot of your time. Um, would love to hear what's next for you. I mean, you've got a beautiful website, um, the Hyper Conscious Podcast Show. It's uh, a dot com. Um, what's next for you, and where can we find you and, and uh, get in touch? What's next for me is continued growth and evolution for the Hyper Conscious Podcast. We're really trying to continue being as consistent as possible so we can continue to scale our impact and help as many people as possible. I'm also, like I mentioned earlier, and like you mentioned for me, I am a peak performance coach, and I'm also a podcast coach. I help people go from zero to podcast, and that's one of my passions because, again, this podcast has changed my life in so many ways. I couldn't even count how many ways it's changed my life. So I just want to give the gift of that to other people, and I'm also a professional speaker, so more speaking. I say I want my life to be a multiplied version of my life now. I want my future to be what it is, but multiplied. I love it. I love it. Well, um, I can tell both you and Alan when you're on the show, even though we're not in person, I can tell that you're smiling, you're happy. You've got a high spirit and I, and it bleeds through in your voice and in the show. And, and I want to thank you again for being on my show. It's always an honor when people are willing to be on the show. And I, um, I truly believe that our guests will be better for our, our listeners will be better for our guests, I should say. So thank you so much. I, I, I appreciate it so much. If anybody needs anything, if you heard this episode, uh, please feel free to reach out to me and let me know how I can be of service at Never Quit Kid on Instagram. I answer all my DMs and I will help you in any way I can. Thank you for listening to today's show. It is my pleasure and honor to interview all of the guests that have been on the Answer is Yes podcast. If you have enjoyed the show, please go on iTunes and subscribe, give a rating, or simply tell a friend about the show. We also believe in the message of our guests and the positive influence of their stories. As my own mentor and coach, David Meltzer, has taught me, spend some time every day thinking and writing about the things in your own life that you have more than enough of. You will find out how blessed we really are. Please visit my website, livelifedriven.com, for the latest updates about me and what I'm doing. Plus, I post a monthly blog about the many topics on this show. This podcast can also be found there. As I learned early on in life, what you believe is what you will achieve. Thanks, Mark Victor Hansen, and thank you, and have a great week.